So I was four or five seconds away from going to bed, no lie. But then I remembered the new chapter of Kaiju number eight drops tomorrow. I'm already two chapters behind, so bed gotta wait a little bit longer. It's so weird that it feels like these two chapters flew by because I feel like we got a lot of low key information in them. If you've been following the Kaiju number eight manga, you already know it's usually stray hands. But in these two chapters, it's actually a lot of good dialogue that we could use to speculate on how they're gonna go in the future of the series and things like that. So I'm gonna do what I'm used to doing. I'm gonna give a quick overview of the two chapters and then I'm kind of gonna go into my thoughts on exactly how I feel like the series is gonna go moving forward. For these two chapters, I thought we were nearing the end real soon. Now I'm kind of like, okay, we're a little bit further down the line from this manga ending and I'm happy about it. We're starting off with chapter 113. It's looking like Kafka just took out Kaiju number nine. If y'all remember, he was able to make contact with Kaiju number nine's core in 112. And it looks like a direct impact, y'all. Like core is shattered. Kaiju number nine looks cooked. Everybody's rejoicing. It's real good vibes right now. But before the people up top can even announce that Kafka won the fight, this guy Kaiju number nine is telling Kafka from beyond the grave, we need to talk and brings him into an alternate reality. One we've never seen before in Kaiju number eight, but we kind of have some hints to what's going on here from previous chapters. Starting with this mask that Kafka sees when he's first brought into the world, kind of bringing him back to feudal Japan a little bit. But if y'all been keeping up with the manga, a few chapters back, probably 50 plus chapters back, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm talking about a few. Before Hosina and Kafka first started their training, we see Kafka turn around and he sees somebody with a mask similar to what we see in this chapter. And we learn later on in the chapter that this is no mere coincidence. Right after this though, Kafka finds Kaiju number 9 in a small little chibi version of itself. Now, when I first read this chapter, it must have been late because I thought that number nine was just yapping and trying to stall for time. But after reading it again, number nine is clearly saying that there's a long time beef between itself and the kaiju that's in Kafka. Saying things like it recognized the kaiju inside of Kafka from when they first interacted and that it should recognize the site that they're at right now. Later going on to comment on the link between the kaiju and Kafka itself, saying that it must have real beef to be exerting all this power despite the fact that they really don't be locked in like that. Which is very interesting to me because up until this point, we haven't really seen Kafka and his kaiju like talk or have any type of interaction. Up until this point, I didn't even know that they could have a conversation for real. I would have never guessed it was that much of a deeper beef between the kaiju and Kafka and kaiju number nine. I thought that was a direct Kafka and kaiju number nine issue. Which then brings it all the way back to chapter one, the kaiju choosing Kafka to begin with. Was there a deeper reason for that? Because later on in the chapter, after kaiju number nine gets done yapping in, it really feels like it's stolen, I'm not gonna lie. Talking about Kafka, you won, stand proud, you're strong, all that bullshit. You get to see all the literal demons living inside Kaiju number nine. Now, these are the same Kaiju that Mina saw when she was trapped inside Kaiju number nine, but whole time, it's actually one whole Dai Kaiju from the Meiriku era. And I'm not even gonna lie to y'all, this shit looked treacherous. I thought number nine and number two working together was bad, but this thing, like, bro, this Kaiju got real final boss potential, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, respect to number nine, but even he wasn't moving like this. So while Kafka is literally dumbfounded at what he's looking at, we then go back to the real world where Mina is looking dead at him. And whole time, Kaiju number nine got a whole tendril going through Kafka's chest. Bro, when I first seen this, my mouth literally dropped to the floor. Like, no way Kafka is going out like this. You really hate to see it, bro. Like, if I was living in their world right now, I'll be tight. That's why you never celebrate too soon, for real. Now, 113 was definitely a solid chapter. I like how they integrated everything from earlier on in the series with the mask and how it kind of relates to Kafka's kaiju deeper than I anticipated anyway. And then introducing this final boss through what we assumed was the final boss at a time. On top of the ending with the tendril going through Kafka's chest, I gotta give this chapter a 9 out of 10. This shit was solid. Going right into 114, we start off with Kaiju number 9's backstory. Bro thought he was born ain't shit and he was never gonna be shit. So it decided to just stay out the way altogether, not really interact with humans like that. Until the day it found out that it was stronger and low-key a little bit smarter than some of the humans out here. It even states that till this very moment, it cannot stop learning. It's always taking in some type of education. Boy got a built-in supercomputer on top of his head. I knew that shit wasn't just for show. Whole motherboard satellite dish in that dome piece. Interesting choice of words that it decides to use next though. It says, as if I were being guided, I encountered that. And then we run into the Daikaiju that was introduced in the last chapter from the Meiriki era. Now, this is interesting because it seems like this Daikaiju is literally guiding kaiju number nine and damn near all the actions that it ends up performing in this series and from that long ago at that its influence gotta be strong as hell really the head kaiju back in the day and today i'm telling y'all stop playing with the final boss we come back to the present day we see reno still trying to hold off some of these kaiju apparently they stop moving Iaru facetimes him and tells him the same thing like yo the kaiju stopped moving on my side too 
I guess old man Kafka got the job done, but before Reno could even say congratulations to his mentor, we go back to Mina staring down Kafka as he got stabbed in his chest in the last chapter. Everybody up top spectating is panicking. Oh, I, we saw Kaiju number nine's core get destroyed. How was his power level rising beyond what Kaiju number nine's was? This is a completely different Kaiju. That Kaiju inside of Kafka must have heard them boys counting him out because he woke up real quick. Looking angry as hell too, we ain't never see that much emotion come out of that Kaiju. He's going in for the finisher fade on Kaiju number nine, but then we see it start to split. So number nine splits right down the middle and we see mad eyes going on inside of it. Blood really thought he was Donzo for real. We then see it activate some kind of spell or incantation on Kafka's left shoulder while he's going for the punch. And in the literal blink of one of his 30 eyes, Kafka's left arm is cooked. Detached from his body completely, clean cut. But he's not done there. Before Kafka can even process what just happened, my man has an incantation going across his chest now. He blinks and sends Kafka flying across the battlefield with a hole in his chest. That core barely hanging off for dear life after that. And the people up top mentioning it too, they like, yo, we don't even detect Kafka's vitals no more. Mina gets pissed and asks him to drop some more ammo off at the drop site. He's about to empty the entire clip out at number nine right this instant. But before they can even process her request, number nine takes her gun away completely, cuts it right down the middle. Bro, she's lucky she still has an arm. Like, number nine is really precise with it now. It really could have cut her right down the middle if it wanted to, bro. I'm telling you, the plot is saving these characters. Mina's still on BT after this. She pulls out the pistol like, I'm gonna just empty the nine out on you then. That's when Kaiju number nine, I mean, the Dai Kaiju control in Kaiju number nine. That's the saying, not only has nobody ever escaped, but in no era has anybody ever escaped. Which adds further context onto what Mina had first heard when she was inside number nine to begin with about no one ever being able to escape. I'm here thinking bro's talking about just in his existence. No, it's talking about the Daikaiju, bro. That shit caught me off guard completely. This Daikaiju is not playing no game. Gotta give this chapter a 10 out of 10. We got a lot more context on number nine's backstory and how it's connected to the Daikaiju to begin with. And we immediately get to see how much of a threat this Daikaiju actually is. It got Kafka out the way in two blinks. And it's seemingly about to pull Mina right back inside of it without even having to take a single step. This thing is clearly a problem. I'm really trying to think how they about to deal with this. Because I feel like with the introduction of this Daikaiju, the series is definitely going to get extended. But by how much? Because I feel like they have to take care of it right now. Y'all seen how calculated Kaiju number 9 was when it was at the helm orchestrating all these plans to mess with the Kaiju Defense Force. Imagine having this Dai Kaiju running shit with Kaiju number 9's intelligence. It's over with. So some way, somehow they're going to have to deal with it today. And I feel like a lot of the members from the Kaiju Defense Force are going to have to come in and really stall until Kafka's able to get back on his feet. The heavy hitters like Kikuru, Reno, Iharu, they're going to have to come in and really do some work at this point. But they've been fighting for so long, their combat suits have had to reach maximum capacity at this point. They can definitely stall it for a couple chapters though. If JJK did it with Sukuna, I don't see why Kaiju number 8 can't do it. I think while this is happening, we're going to see a lot more of Kafka dealing with his Kaiju and kind of building a relationship with it. To some capacity, it don't got to be a good relationship. It could be how like when Naruto first met the Nine Tails, and we haven't really seen an interaction before with them. So they don't have to be buddy-buddy, but they both have a common hate for Kaiju number 9. I think that's when it's all gonna come together. It's gonna culminate. They're gonna find a way to escape from that feudal era they're in. And when we see Kaiju number eight in action again, it's gonna be a much stronger version of Berserk mode could ever be. Cause now they gonna be locked in. They gonna really be in sync for real. Those are my predictions going forward in the series. I don't really see this series lasting too much longer after this. I hope I'm wrong, but I really don't see them dragging this more than they already have. I know the series is only 114 chapters, but Kaiju number nine has been a part of it since before chapter 10. And it's been the big bad since then, so I feel like it's only right that we get rid of him sooner than later. Y'all let me know y'all thoughts in the chapter and y'all expectations for chapter 115.